Hi, this tutorial video will show you how to make a livery for Microsoft Flight Simulator using Best Danny's MSFS to Blend add-on. Before we begin this tutorial you should know it's not a complete beginner's guide. You need to be at least a bit familiar with both Blender and either GIMP, Photoshop or Paint.net. It will explain how to make a livery, but it's not going to teach you the very basics of using Blender or one of the image editors if you've never used them before. If you're a total beginner, I suggest that you stop watching this now and get started with other tutorials. Uh, for example, Andrew Price's Blender Guru series on YouTube for Blender. I suggest watching the video that the person who created this add-on has made himself, because he covers things about texture painting in Blender that I don't in this video. I'll try and answer any related questions in the comments as best I can, ju but just bear in mind I'm not the, the guy who made these programs or the add-ons, I'm just a normal guy who somewhat knows how to use them. To follow this tutorial you'll need two main tools, Blender and GIMP. Paint.net will also work if you know how to use that, and so will Photoshop, but only if you get the NVIDIA DDS plugin uh, that's covered in other tutorial videos. In this tutorial I will be using GIMP. I'm using GIMP 2.10.20 which you can download from GIMP.org and Blender 2.9 which you can get at Blender.org. Uh, links are in the description. Blender 2.83 also works. While it's not absolutely necessary, it's a good idea to have the livery template pack so you don't actually overwrite or change any files in the official aircraft folder. You can find the links to this template pack on the Microsoft Flights or the MSFS livery mega pack discord server linked in the description. Just bear in mind this tutorial is not here to show you how to prepare liveries to be included in the mega pack, only just to get them working on your own machine. You're going to have to do more learning of your own after this. Once you have Blender and GIMP installed, you are going to need to download the add-on from Best Danny's GitHub. It's github.com forward slash Best Danny forward slash MSFS to blend. To download this, you can go to tag and choose the newest release as of the time of this video 0.1.1. So download this. This is all you need, the Python file here. So save that. And now open Blender. And we will install this add-on. To install an add-on in Blender, open Blender. Then on the top bar, choose the Edit menu and Edit Preferences. Then press Install. Find the location where you downloaded that Python file. For me it's in Downloads. Click Install Add-on and it should install there. Next, enable the add-on by searching MSFS. Just make sure that the Import Export option is enabled. Once this is done you can close this window. Select everything in the default scene by pressing A and then press Delete. We don't need any of them so we'll get rid of them now. Once the add-on is installed, we can actually import the model we want. For this tutorial, I will be using the Cessna Grand Caravan. So to do this, you will need to know where your flight sim directory is installed. Then go to File, Import, MSFS, GLTF, and then choose where your data is installed. If you haven't changed the location during your install, it's probably in app data. There are plenty of tutorials to find where that is. I will probably put them in the description, the paths where you'll find it. Next, you'll see your community and official folders. We'll go into official, and then these are the aircraft here at the top. I'm gonna to choose the aircraft Grand Caravan. Sim objects, airplanes, the name of the airplane, then the model folder. This is the same process for any other aircraft. Next, you might want to change it to horizontal list. You are looking for the exterior models of the plane at the highest level of detail, which is zero, zero. So anything that doesn't say interior 
is the one you need to pick. Once that's done, you have imported the model into the Blender view space. Once the model is imported, it brings every aspect of the model. Lots of these are irrelevant, that we don't want to paint the textures on, especially if we just want to put it on the body of the plane. We will now hide irrelevant objects. To do this, go to the right hand side menu in the inspector, type the word fuselage, and you will see we're left with one option here. Click this to select this item. Then move the mouse over the 3D viewport and press Shift H. Shift H hides everything except the selected object. With the model now imported and the irrelevant objects hidden out of view, we can begin our texture paint mode. To do this, go to the top bar and select texture paint. This changes the workspace slightly. The next step in the process is to add an image texture onto the material that we want to change. So to do this, go to the right hand side menu here, make sure the hull material, it could be called fuselage depending on the aircraft you're working on, is selected and then press plus here in the no textures area and then add base color. When you're adding this texture you can name it whatever you want. I suggest changing the color to white but you must make sure the size is a power of 2. So things like 1024 squared, 2048 squared, 4096, 8, I forget what it is. The base textures in Microsoft Flight Simulator are 2048 by 2048. However, if you want a crisper texture or will be placing writing on the body, it's recommended to increase this to 4096 by 4096. Once you are done, press OK. The material on the plane now changes to match the color of the texture you created. Because I made my texture white, it will be white. If you left it black, the plane will now be black. To open the texture we just created in the left hand menu, go to the top bar, choose this icon next to new, and select the name of the texture you just created. This loads it into the image editor. There are two main ways to paint onto the aircraft body, I will explain both of them now. Method number one involves using the brush inside GIMP. For this method you simply pick a colour, set the size of the brush and then click and use the mouse or tablet to draw directly onto the model surface. So we will choose a colour using the colour wheel. We will select the size of our brush by pressing F and then moving the mouse to scale it, then clicking to confirm the size we want. Once you've selected the colour and size you want to paint onto the model, simply click. Once you let go, changes will immediately appear onto the texture you created. By default, the brush and blender leaves a soft feathered edge along the edges. To change this, go to the top bar, scroll with the mouse wheel, and then choose fall off. To get a perfectly hard edge, use the linear profile here. By default, clicking and painting only paints on one side of the aircraft where the mouse actually is. If you'd like to paint on both sides at the same time, you can enable symmetry by going to the right hand menu, scrolling down, opening the symmetry menu and choosing an axis to mirror along. Not all aircraft are mirrored along the same axis. For the Grand Caravan, the axis of symmetry is the X-axis. Click to enable symmetry, then when you paint on the model, you can see that it transfers directly over to the other side. The default brush is perfectly fine for curved and freehand drawing, but to draw straight lines it's 
a slightly different process. To draw straight lines, go to the top menu, choose stroke, and then change the stroke method from space to either line or curve. I'll explain the differences between the two of these now. With the line option, left click and hold to select where you want the line to start, then drag to the end point and release. Once you release, this draws the line. The line is drawn with the same radius and color as you selected before, so to change the size of the brush beforehand will give you larger lines. The second method of drawing a straight line is to change the stroke method to curve. To do this, go to the top menu, choose stroke, stroke method, curve. To draw a curve, hold control and then right click to define a start point and then right click again while holding control to define an end point. Once these points are defined, you can left click and drag to adjust them into any position you want. And then once you're happy with the way that they are laid out, to stroke the line, choose stroke, draw curve, or up here in the top menu, choose stroke and draw curve. This paints along the line with the color and radius of the brush that you previously selected. The second method of painting textures directly onto an aircraft and the one that is much more powerful for people who are already familiar and comfortable with either Photoshop or GIMP or an image editor is to use stenciling. Stenciling basically lets you take an image texture, position it onto the model, then draw it directly onto the texture. To do this, start by going to the red checkerboard on the bottom of these tabs. This is the texture menu. To add a new texture, press new, then open. Choose the location of an image that you have already created. In this case, I have some here in Air Aaron Caravan. Then select the image and press open. Once the image is opened, return to the Texture Paint tool menu by pressing the screwdriver and wrench icon. Next, if you change the color, you need to reset it to white. You can do this either by dragging to the middle and increasing the saturation, or just by decreasing the saturation to zero and the value to one. After this, Scroll down to Texture, open the menu, and you will see your newly created texture appear. Change the mapping to Stencil. Press Image Aspect, which is important if your image is not a square, because it will be distorted otherwise. And then change the Stroke method from either Curve or Line back to Space. The texture will now appear as a transparent image. To adjust the position of the stencil, Right click and hold to move it, press shift and right click to scale it, and press control and right click to rotate it. Move the stencil into the desired position, and then once you are happy with it, left click and hold, and then draw over the stencil. The stencil is now drawn directly onto the texture. Just be aware that if you left symmetry on, stencils will also be drawn on both sides. This can be annoying if you forget it and you're trying to draw text because it will be fine on this side but it will be mirrored here. Once you're happy with your paint job, we will now export this image here. So to do this, go to the left hand side menu, go to the top bar, choose image and then save. You can save as if you want to choose where to save it. I will do that now, so I will save it into downloads and hullbasecolor.png. Now we can minimize Blender and open GIMP. With GIMP open, we go to File, Open, and find our newly created image file. Now that this is open, we need to get the detail from the underlying texture for this aircraft model. 
just so we don't lose out any details by painting everything pure white. To do this, go to where you downloaded the template folder, choose the aircraft that you're working on, navigate through the folders and then find the file called aircraft name underscore airframe underscore either body or fuselage depending on the aircraft underscore ALBD for Albedo. Once we find this we can go to GIMP open as layers copy the path or just navigate there inside GIMP and then open the image. In the dialog box that appears, uncheck load mip maps. If you decided to make an image of 4096 by 4096 in Blender, then this texture will not be to the same size. If you created a 2048 by 2048 image, this will be perfectly on top of the image below. To correct this, we need to scale this layer up. To do this, we go to Layer, Scale Layer, and then change this size to the size of the image. Next, we go to the layer, change the layer mode to Multiply. Changing a layer mode to multiply means that this layer will add its details to the layer below it. At this stage I suggest you save this image in case you want to make any changes to it in the future. I won't in this tutorial but to do that press save and then choose a place for it. Once you've set this layer as a multiplication layer and have saved the image we can go to file, export as and then choose a new name. The reason that we had to export as a PNG is because if you try to export as a DDS in GIMP it only chooses the first layer despite your, whatever settings you choose, so if you do that you will only get the same base texture going back out that you had in. Once you've exported final texture, you can go to open recent and open the image that you just saved. And from here you can go to file, export as. When you're exporting this image, you need to change it to have the exact same name as the texture that it will replace. So in this case, if we go to Templates and Cessna 208B, the image that this is replacing is Cessna 208B Grand Caravan X Airframe Body <laughs> Albedo PN .png .dds. So once you click that there, you have the name in. You don't need to save it in this folder, but you can if you want. I'm going to do that now. So press export, replace it. And for compression, you I like to use the XT5 and generate mip maps. And these are the only two options you need to change. You can play around with these. I haven't, but uh, they are basically ways to keep the file size small on images that are powers of two. Once done, press export. The final step is to add the newly created texture template pack into the game's community folder. So to do this, I will just go back to the folder that I have edited here, copy it, find the game's community folder, in my case it is on J drive, whereas yours might be in the app data folder. So I will just go here, like some 2020 data community and then you can post it as a template here. If you have liveries from an older version of the Mega Pack, this may not work. Um, 
so if you're just doing this to test it out for yourself, you might just move the liveries folder for the same aircraft to a different uh, a different directory. I will just do that now for a quick second. Once you've done all of this, the next step is to open up the game. Once in the game, to view the aircraft, go to Profile, My Hangar, choose the aircraft that you edited the texture on, in my case the Cessna Grand Caravan. Go back, go to Liveries. Once in Liveries, you should see Default and Template. If you don't have the if you don't have the livery mega pack installed and select template and you will see your image however there is a problem there are still decals drawn on the aircraft in order to fix this we need to tab out of the game I'm going to go back into the folder that we just added to the community folder, but you're going to have to do this twice if you have edited the template folder somewhere else then dragged it in here. And for specifically the Grand Caravan and the Beechcraft King Air, there is one file here called Cessna, uh, called Aircraft Name Airframe Livery that causes problems. For the Grand Caravan it is a 2 by 2 square with white, grey, grey and black. For the Beechcraft King Air there's white, beige, red and another colour. The problem is that this this curve here is using the colours of this square so to fix this we need to open this in GIMP Okay, zoom in, press delete to just make it transparent, export as, make sure you choose this one because by default it will try and export it as a PNG. Then export, replace. Wait for the options to come up, generate map maps, compression is fine, press export. Return to the game, choose liveries, change to default or a different livery, and then return to template. And you will see now that the stripes have gone away and the delivery that you created will now show up. So yeah, that's it. As I said, this is my first proper tutorial video, so hopefully it helped you either get started or taught you something new if you're already good at how to, uh, good at doing deliveries. Um, I decided to make this tutorial after seeing the the difference between switching to this method compared to the first time I did a paint job which this method it took me about an hour and a half to learn fully and then from there I could do up a proper texture in about 45 minutes the first time around when I was just doing it in GIMP and just loading it back in every single time into the simulator it took eight hours and uh, Eight hours to create a livery that someone else submitted to the Mega Pack 20 minutes before I got mine in for the same aircraft and the same airline. That's life. Thanks for watching, and I hope it helped.